Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote in the first polled video of 2021, and like and subscribe for better father figures next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Jason Todd, also known as Robin, also known as Red Hood. Being a Robin after Grayson is pretty intimidating, but Jason has enough skills and his own flavor to hit that bar. Sorry, be hit by that bar. Jason. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be nimble with the ability to slink through the shadows and dodge everyone's hits. Next, we need guns. Batman might have a policy, but if he didn't have that policy, you might not be as edgy. Finally, we need other toys that your dad would actually approve of. Smoke bombs, grappling hooks, and real bombs. Wait, why is he okay with grenades and not guns? This is fully a crime alley thing, isn't it? I'm starting to think that Batman's rules might be arbitrarily created out of his own trauma, rather than to be the best crime deterrence. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch them. Multi-classing minimums, you have quite a few. Dexterity will be number one. Shooting, dodging, and doing sweet but slightly unnecessary backflips are all dexterity based. Intelligence next, despite your head trauma, you still manage to make your own gear. The red hood is so big, because it needs to hold all your secrets. Wisdom after that, sure, you've got impulse control problems, but you're incredibly perceptive. Follow that up with constitution, you're not the Red Hood because you died, you're the Red Hood because you didn't die, and because you got dunked in the Lazarus pit, but also because you're tough. Charisma is a bit low, you're intimidating, but not exactly fun to talk to, pretty much being the Shadow the Hedgehog to Nightwing Sonic. We'll dump strength though, not because we don't need it, we'll just get so many ways to fix it up, it'll actually still be one of your better roles at level one. Jason is a human, you could go with Revenant, but then we wouldn't get a feat and I want to put out the damage right away with the sharpshooter feat. This will let you fire at max range with ranged weapons and not have disadvantage. You can ignore all but full cover and take a negative 5 penalty to your attack roll to deal an extra 10 damage when you really want to land that headshot. So all the time. Bump your dexterity and your wisdom with your two free points. Take intimidation for your skill of choice and modify the urchin background for acrobatics and sleight of hand. We'll get stealth from somewhere else later, but you're definitely a bit of a street rat. The whole reason you crime fight is because Batman caught you trying to steal the rims off the Batmobile. Honestly, I get it. That's a move you only make if you're brave and bold. We'll kick things off as a ranger because they're great at hunting down targets and so are you. This will give you three skills from the ranger list like stealth, perception, and investigation. The latter two to hunt down criminals and the former to make sure that you get the drop on them. We'll be using the class feature variance ranger which I hope gets confirmed in Tasha's. I think it's a nice balance between the original and the first revised version. You get deft explorer instead of natural explorer letting you pick one of three options. I'll go for roving for now, giving you climbing and swimming speeds equal to your normal speed and plus five to that speed as well, making you a little bit faster and helping you get to the Gotham rooftops. Class feature variants rangers also get favored foe instead of favored enemy, letting you cast the spell Hunter's Mark a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier per day without using concentration. This lets you give yourself advantage on checks to track one creature and an extra d6 of damage for every weapon attack you make against them for an hour. Jason tends to get a bit of tunnel vision, but that's okay because if you kill them within that hour, you can move that mark to new target as a bonus action. If you can get that done in an hour, imagine what you could do with a whole evening. Second level rangers get a fighting style archery adds two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons, helping you alleviate that sharpshooter penalty and making sure that you get all the damage out that you possibly can. Rangers also get some spells at this level. Fog Cloud creates a 20 foot radius of heavily obscuring fog, which isn't great for you to shoot into, but can be a great way to escape if you don't want people to shoot you. It does get blown away by winds or just shut down when you drop concentration in the next hour, but by then you're going to be miles away. Or at least the thugs will think you are. Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and the type of magic causing them, letting you use your hood to do a little detective work. Rumor has it there's a crocodile man in the sewers. That's got to be transmutation or something, right? Third level rangers can choose a ranger archetype, and after a tragedy, it's perfectly natural for a ranger to become a war guy. Gloomstalkers are gloomy, but they make up for it with Umbral Sight, giving you 60 feet of dark vision, and you're invisible to other creatures relying on dark vision to see you, letting you sneak up on Batman. To make him really dread your ambush, take advantage of the Dread Ambusher ability, letting you add your wisdom modifier to your initiative rolls, you're 10 feet faster on the first round of combat, and you can make an extra attack as part of your attack action on the first round of combat, dealing an extra D8 of damage as well. With Sharpshooter and Hunter's Mark, that means 4d6 plus 1d8 plus 26 damage in a single round is possible with a hand crossbow. Or at least it would be if we could fire that thing multiple times in a round. Fourth level rangers might grab the crossbow expert feat, but not today. No, I just want plus two dexterity for better sneaking, shooting, and dodging. 
Honestly, if you can take the bad guys out in one shot, there's no need for an extra attack. Even though fifth level rangers do get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action and three attacks in the first round thanks to Dread Ambusher. For now, just use a longbow if you want a power build, otherwise sneak up behind someone and use a knife. Speaking of sneaking up behind someone and stabbing them, rangers are very good sneakers thanks to the spell Pass Without Trace, which gives you and the outlaws of your choice within 30 feet of you plus down to your stealth checks for up to an hour depending on your concentration. I don't think you need to worry about things hitting you to break your concentration since this would make your stealth modifier plus 17 at this point, like the lowest you can get on the roll is an 18. That's nuts for someone who's effectively wearing a Buffalo Bills helmet. If you'd rather just prove that your dad is only the world's second greatest detective, Locate Object lets you locate an object either specifically or of a general type within a thousand feet of you. If it's moving, you know what direction it's moving in and it lasts for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. Maybe you're looking for a clown makeup kit, a quarter staff with a question mark on it, or just a really solid cheesecake. You've had a rough couple of years. Treat yourself, buddy. Sixth level rangers get another deft explorer ability. Canny gives you another skill from the ranger list and you can double the proficiency bonus. Go for athletics to put a little venom into your body. Since you've got proficiency with saving throws and the only strength skill, congratulations, you're basically strong. Seventh level gloom stalkers get iron mind, giving you proficiency with wisdom saving throws, helping you be a little less crazy now that you've worked out some of your issues. Some of your issues, not, not all of them. 8th level rangers get another ability score improvement. Let's cap off our dexterity to fly around like a bird boy. Wait, that's why they're called robins. Okay, I get that now. Now that we've got all of our skills, we need to get some of our toys. Artificers get Tinkerer's Tools and Thieves' Tools proficiency to do that. Not to mention, you're a magical tinkerer, letting you mess with some tiny non-magical item, putting a little text stuff into it, like a tiny puff of smoke or a pre-recorded message or a static visual image. I could see you using this to mess with some henchmen while you slink through their warehouse. You get cantrips and spells. For cantrips, Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 2d8 lightning damage to a creature and prevents them from taking reactions, helping you get away. Thorn Whip is a melee spell attack with a 30 foot range somehow. It deals 2d6 piercing damage and lets you pull a creature up to 10 feet closer to you if they're large or smaller. So you would be able to yank in King Shark, but you would probably have some troubles with Adam if he's at his full size. For first level spells, Jump triples your jump distance for a minute, helping you jump over alleyways, and Long Strider adds 10 to your movement speed, which when paired with your roving ability will basically make you just as fast as you would be if we went Monk. Since we're multi-classing spellcasters, check page 165 of the player's handbook to keep an eye on how many spells you have at any given level. Second level artificers get infusions, special items that make you a little bit cooler. Repeating shot makes a weapon magical and it gets plus one to attack and damage rolls and automatically loads itself so you can shoot it as much as you want to. Enhanced weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon, letting you load up your dagger with some kryptonite if you need to kill a kryptonian. Enhanced defense adds one to the AC of a set of armor or shield, setting your AC at 18 with studded leather. I'd count your helmet as one very large stud. Finally, a cap of water breathing lets a creature breathe underwater so you can go hunt that crocodile man in the sewers if you need to. Third level artificers can choose a specialty and artillerists get a second gun they can hold and fire as a bonus action with an Eldritch Cannon. It can be a forced ballista that deals 2d8 force damage and pushes the target back 5 feet with a ranged spell attack, a flamethrower that forces a dexterity saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and intelligence modifier on creatures in a 15 foot cone, dealing 2d8 fire damage to those that fail, or a protector to give creatures within 10 feet of you 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier in temporary HP if you just want to give your allies a little venom boost. Personally, I like the force damage the best. Get a semi-automatic pistol in one hand and a magnum in the other. It's fun to mix and match. You also get the shield spell, letting you add 5 to your AC as a reaction, helping you deflect incoming batarangs or even enemy bullets. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement. Since your bonus action gun requires your intelligence modifier, let's get that higher so you're just as accurate with guns akimbo. Fifth level artillerists get an arcane firearm, letting you add a d8 of damage to one spell attack per round if you're using this as your focus, meaning that Thorn Whip and Shocking Grasp shouldn't be overlooked just because they're cantrips. The utility of dragging someone in or stopping them from making opportunity attacks is great, especially with extra damage. You can also learn second level spells like Enhance Ability to give a creature advantage on checks of a certain type. If you choose Strength, they also double their carrying capacity. If you choose Dexterity, they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose Constitution, they get 2d6 of temporary HP if you want to push yourself even further than your mentors do. Sixth level artificers get Tool Expertise, letting you add double your proficiency bonus to your tool checks for picking locks or building your fun little gadgets. You also get two more infusions. Boots of Elvenkind give you advantage on stealth checks with Pass Without Trace Up. That's advantage plus 20, so I think you're going to be able to sneak away from Superman in his funky little hearing. Gloves of Thievery add five to your sleight of hand checks. It's not quite expertise, but at this level it is. 
Maybe if you try it again, you could actually get the rims off the Batmobile. That'd be a big flex. Seventh level artificers get Flash of Genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw a creature makes within 30 feet of you as a reaction, an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier. Since you're within 30 feet of yourself, you can help yourself. But if you don't want to be a lone wolf, one of the outlaws would probably appreciate some advice. You're technically their leader, after all. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement. Keep getting that intelligence modifier up. It's eventually what we're going to use to make bombs. We'll make bombs at the ninth level of artificer, since artillerists can learn to spell fireball to force a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Worth noting that you can add an additional d6 of fire damage for every level you upcast it, especially considering this is really the only spell you have that can be upcast with your higher level slots. That means bigger bombs, but it also means that your third level slots are free to cast the spell haste which adds two to your ac doubles your movement speed gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action you can use to dash disengage hide use an object or make one more attack this pretty much gives you everything a monk would have but also it's better it only lasts for a minute and when it ends you can't take actions or reactions though if you drop concentration obviously the spell ends early you also get an explosive cannon letting you add a d8 of damage to your eldritch cannon attacks and make it explode forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere failing that they take 3d8 force damage i guess you can make your guns explode that's some Borderlands stuff. Tenth of Artificers are magical item adepts, letting you attune up to four items at once, just in time for some new infusions. Boots of Striding and Springing triple your jump distance automatically, or make it nine times larger with the jump spell for 72 feet horizontally or 18 feet vertically. I'd pretty comfortably call that a grappling hook. Gloves of Missile Snaring let you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier as a reaction if you have a free hand. If for some reason you're being outzoned, though you shouldn't with the Sharpshooter feet, 11th level artificers get spell storing item letting you store a spell of first or second level into an item after that you or another creature can cast that spell through that item an amount of times per day equal to double your intelligence modifier i guess enhanceability could be nice but maybe go with long strider since it doesn't require your concentration that would basically set your movement speed to a consistent 45 feet our capstone is the 12th level of Artificer for one last ability score improvement, letting us cap off our intelligence modifier to make both of our guns fire with maximum efficiency. Before we talk about how viable this build is, I should say I went back and forth on what Jason should be, so I think it's only fair that I give you a sneak peek into my thought process. First thought was Kensei Monk, but Jason's helmet is definitely armor of some kind, not to mention his flak jacket, so unarmored didn't feel right. Also, some of the big benefits of Kensei Monk are magical weapons, which makes it a little redundant with Artificer. We needed some sort of casting class for various bombs. I went with Artificer since, well, Jason builds his gadgets. I actually toyed around with the idea of an undead warlock for his spells with Ra's al Ghul and the Lazarus Pit as your patron of sorts, but that meant reflavoring guns to be Eldritch Blast and we still couldn't get Fireball there, so it wasn't quite what I needed. Honestly, neither was Artificer on its own, because for some reason they can't learn Fog Cloud, which seems pretty on brand for the gadget class, so Ranger took the place of Fighter or Monk. Now, technically, this build doesn't have any hand-to-hand -hand skill. You could just swap out a level for Monk. It would just cost you an ability score improvement, and they were pretty tight. Plus, anything you're fighting up close, you might as well just use a knife for. Finally, we didn't go to Rogue since Gloomstalker is sort of a fusion of Fighter and Rogue anyway. It let us cut down on the multi-classing for a bit of a better build. If there's any other class that you think that Jason should be, you can comment about it. But I think you're going to have to work pretty hard to convince me he should be a druid. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, all your bullets are magical and they really pump the damage out. With Hunter's Mark, Haste, and an Eldritch Cannon Shot, you can deal 8d6 plus 1d8 plus 64 piercing damage and 3d8 force damage to a single target in the first round, provided you've already cast Hunter's Mark and Haste from the Shadows before initiative got rolled. You're also incredibly good at infiltration, with an abundance of movement options and stealth skills to get you in and out of where you need to go. Finally, when you decide to stop being a lone wolf, you've got plenty of spells and abilities like Flash of Genius to help your team operate effectively. For weaknesses, your charisma is low, meaning that you might have some some issues with negotiating or just not being sent to other dimensions by weirder foes. You're also lacking proficiency with constitution saving throws, so concentration could be an issue, especially with spells like haste that punish you for dropping it. Finally, a lot of your spells require concentration, like detect magic, fog cloud, pass without trace, locate object, enhance ability, and haste, meaning that in addition to being bad at using them and keeping them up, you might also have to drop them early to access a different gadget on your belt. But with proper planning, that shouldn't be an issue. Stealth in, psych yourself up, and drop one of the baddies in the first round before
before anyone even realizes you're there. Just remember to disengage if you need to. Nobody needs another death in the family. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote in the first poll of 2021. I'm taking December off to rest up, and I'm switching up to only using two characters per poll instead of three to make sure that everyone gets at least a shot at redemption. We're starting off with Cyclops and Gambit from the X-Men. Check it out.